What's up everybody, B Mason built by B Mason. Look, I just finished up 18 today and I took the gold pearl shaft out. I've been playing with this for about 30 days now, almost a month, and it's been holding up really good. Paint has not came off. I'm gonna teach you guys how to spray paint your own golf shaft. Let's do it. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to spray paint a golf shaft. Yeah, you heard that right. We spray paint a golf shaft. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of the rumors right now. I was discouraged about doing this for the first time because everywhere I looked, nobody really talked about it. People said, oh, the paint gonna chip off. Uh, oh, it's gonna weigh too much, blah, 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 blah. I heard it all. I wanted to dispel that notion and I wanted to do it for myself, so that's what I did. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it yourself. And this could be done with some basic stuff that you can get from Home Depot and um, you won't gain any more than about probably two or three grams, maybe four at the most. I'm gonna weigh my shell before I start and I'm gonna weigh my shell after I finish. So let's talk about why I'm doing this first. Well, I sent a Scotty Cameron I had off to the golf garage and I, I had everything in mind what I wanted to do before I did. I sent it off to the golf garage because Kyle specializes in putters. I don't really do putters. I do a lot of uh, iron restoration and club building. Haven't really moved into putters yet. I sent it off to Kyle and it came back. This is my Scotty camera. My heart's been ripped wide open. So many mixed emotions. It's like I finally noticed. I've been set free. I've been set free. So let me tell you all what's all involved. I pulled a Scotty camera sticker off just because I don't like any stickers on any of my shelves. You're gonna need some goo gone. You're gonna put this goo gone on where the sticker was because it's still sticky. You're gonna let it sit there. So it's gonna sit there. So that's first and foremost. You're gonna clean this off. You don't have to use this, but this is what I use. The Zep degreaser. You don't really need gloves for this, but I don't know, man. I've worked with this, all different chemicals and stuff so much that I think I'm just used to putting gloves on at this point. Got the shaft, got me a bucket of water, got my, got my rag. It's also good to have one of these little steel wool type, type pads too. As you can see the color on the shaft starting to change colors too. Don't worry about it not looking all shiny anymore. You're about to paint it anyway so it don't matter. Am I the only one who liked the way the greaser smell. I like the way the greaser smell. I'm sorry. All right. Take it. Wipe that down. Before we go any further, I'm going to weigh this thing. All right. It's at zero. Let's put this on here. Bam. All right. This thing is 121 grams. Y'all pay attention now. It's 100 at 21 grams, okay? At the end, we're gonna come back and uh, weigh it again. So 121 grams, the goal is not to get higher than four grams, so we shouldn't be more than 125 grams when it's all said and done. Hopefully, we'll be less than that. So that's what we are, 121 grams. Now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is sanding. This 120 grit sandpaper, we're gonna start at the tip. We're just gonna work our way around. Sponge works the best because you can actually press down to it and it can tour around the circumference of the shaft. So basically what we're doing is we're making this where it will receive the primer better. So I'm gonna finish this off, then I'll come back to y'all. I just finished up with the sand, the first sanding on it. Every sanding we do after this will be a wet sand. Now I'm coming back across it, with the degreaser and the steel wool. Bam, that's it. We are ready to prime. I'm gonna go put it in my painting cabinet. I'm gonna let the sun hit it for about five minutes. And then I'm gonna start priming. 
when I use a spray can on these shafts, I like to use this little gun right here to allow me to control the pressure better. All right, y'all. Shake my can up. It's good to do a test run sometimes. That almost look too wet. So you almost need to be farther back. Like that. So we need to be somewhere in here. Don't forget your PPE. Even though you're outside, Sometimes you still need your, your mask. So if it's just spray paint, I'm not gonna really use my respirator, but I do have a respirator as well. All right, let's do it. You want this to look good? It's not a race. You're not trying to cover it all in the first round. There you go. All right, we let that dry. All right, as you can see, that's the first coat. And we're looking good. Let it dry, wet sand it, then come back with the black primer. Wet sand that, and then uh, come back with the gold. This shaft been chilling for about an hour. Dry as it's gonna be, we're gonna move on to the next step. So, we're gonna take this shaft, we're gonna take this 1500 grit sandpaper. We're gonna drop it in the water. And we're gonna put a super fine sand job on this shaft. I know you guys say, well, how did you learn how to do this? To be honest with you, a lot of experiment and a lot of watching car <laughs> restoration videos. Same concept, you just apply it to something different. Very, very fine. As you can see, I'm not taking any of the paint heavily off. This is very fine. I call it delicate hands. Got to have delicate hands right now. Wax on, wax off. So, we're gonna take our microfiber. We're gonna just like dry this off. We're gonna let it sit in the sun for 10 minutes, something like that. And then we'll go over it with that black primer. Remember that magic number earlier was 121. We have gained one gram. That's it. I told y'all we don't want to be more than three grams. So my goal is to go one gram with the primer white, one gram with the primer black, one gram with the gold, and then sand that down, and then go over it last with the enamel, and we should be good. No more than four grams. So that's where we're at right now. This is one nice, even coat. It's got a little gloss on it because that's the kind of paint it is. A nice, even coat. That's all you want. Yeah. So like I told y'all, it's very time consuming, but the end result can be something special. As you can see though, the black is already on there. That black gonna dry. Next thing you know, it'll be wet sand in that black. And then we'll probably be on to the gold today because it's so hot out here. It's just sitting, it's sitting so fast. I ain't gonna say it's curing, but it's allowing me to move on to the next steps faster. So I just painted the shell. It's all black. Been in the sun for like an hour. Like I told y'all, I started this process like three hours ago. You know what I'm saying? Four hours ago. So it's, and luckily the stuff drying fast cause it's so hot out today. But uh, it's a slow grind. If you really want this to turn out well, it's a slow push, you know what I'm saying? So now that I'm, I put the first coat on there, the primer, I wet sand it. Then I put the second coat on there, which is a black primer. I wet sand it. I'm about, I'm about to wet sand that one right now. Once again, just throw the, throw the 1500 grit in the water. Get it nice and wet. Now all you gotta do from here is take it and you're gonna put that, that slow sand on it. Wax on, wax off. For this to turn out right, 
you gotta take your time. So same thing, you just go over it lightly and gently. The funny part about this is, you know you messed up if you, and you sand it too hard if you see white. Cause white is up under here. Like the black still coming off, you can see the black right there. It's just a light, gentle, wet sand. I told y'all after every time I wet sand, I'm gonna come over here and wet. So we're gonna we're gonna wet again. Remember, y'all know the number we started at. Let's get this right. All right, you see it says zero. I don't want the naysayer to be saying nothing. I told y'all we started at 121. We did the first coat, which was the white primer. That took us to 122. We did the second coat, which is the black primer. That took us to 123. We have we have increased this only by two grams. I told y'all my goal was to stay under four grams. We only we only we put uh, two coats on here, and we only had two grams. So you're looking at about a gram a coat, you know. So. Uh, I just wanted to be transparent with y'all because I know a lot. One thing I saw out there on the web a lot was people were saying, "Oh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna mess it up because you you're gonna make the putter shaft too heavy or the or the whatever the iron shaft too heavy." Lies. Those people saying that ain't never built it before, so or painted it. So yeah, that's where we at. Let's keep the party going. We're gonna get that Q dog go. Some of y'all might not even know what that means, but it's all good. I ain't no cute dog, just by the way. <laughs> oh, how about that six and go right there, y'all? This one of them putters that you sit it down, somebody might take it. <laughs> you, can't, you can't take your eye off this. You go in the pro shop, you take this with you. <laughs> oh my God. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a gold shaft on the on the course, y'all. You know how you play with them old cats? Yeah, you better drain all your put with that thing right there, boy. That boy playing with that 24 karat gold. That's why you better make sure your game tight, man. Cause you know when you come out with some fly yeah. stuff, people always got some dumb shit to say. So you better be ready for it. All right, let's point that to the sun. Let it dry. Woo! Hold up, I gotta spin y'all around. That thing twinkle in the light. Woo! Woo! That thing look like it came out of paint shop. Got them sparkle, them flakes in there. Wow. Bruh. I got my homeboy out here. He knew I he knew I built golf clubs. He didn't know to what extent I do it. I did not. It looks really good. <laughs> looks really good. <laughs> he like, dang, this boy built a golf club for real. That's beautiful, y'all. We're gonna let that dry. And uh we're gonna be good. We're gonna put one more coat. I'm gonna let this sit overnight, cause like I told y'all, I ain't in no hurry. I'm gonna let this cure up. Well, I'm going to wet sand it, I'm going to give it one more coat, and then I'm going to let that coat sit overnight. And tomorrow, I'll finish it off. Come out here early in the morning to finish it off. Look, it's day two, and um, it's a good day. I actually had to go back and watch one of my old videos when I first did this spray painting golf shell type deal. Because uh, I had forgot what I did, but it's like, you know. It's a, a sequence of events that occurred to get to this great spot of having a nice painted golf shelf. I will tell you guys that I did what I told you guys not to do, which is I touched it before 24 hours. I got a fingerprint on it. I had to go back and clean it up a little bit. I didn't put too much work into it because it's my shaft. But listen, if I can't express nothing else when you do this process, take your time. Like, after you spray this thing, do not touch it. If you can, if you can not touch it for three days, don't touch it for three days. That'll be, that'll be to your uh, advantage. Uh, that's how you get that real clean, 
finish. Especially if you don't have like an oven or something to put it in, which I don't have an oven. You probably not gonna have an oven because you're probably a DIYer like me. So uh, yeah, so that's what you need to do. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next step. I went back and watched the old video and I realized that uh, what I do now is I'm gonna put some enamel on it. Uh, this matte clear, or I could go with this, this gloss enamel. And uh, I'm going to put that on there. I'll probably do like two coats and I'm going to let it sit on there. Then after that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wet sand that off with a sponge and a piece of sandpaper. Just a little bit. I'm going to wet sand it. I'm going to get like a thin white film. When that happens, I'm going to let it dry. Then I'm going to take this polish. This is Meguiar's polish. Kind of like doing a car. You know, this is Meguiar's polish. I'm going to polish it. I'm going to take that off. And then last but not least... I'm going to put this canuba oil on there. Yeah, canuba. And then we should be good to go. At that point, I can glue this bad baby up. So I got the shaft out there. It's in the, uh, it's in the spray box again. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it the spray box. It's in the, the spray box. So I'm going to uh, get out there, spray this enamel on there. I, I decide which one I'm going to go with. And then uh, we're going to be good. So let's get out there and start spraying. This is the enamel. This is gonna this gonna help protect this thing. This stuff smells straight like fingernail polish. But that's what it is. That's how the women protect their fingernail polish. That's it for now. We done. Just gonna sit here and dry in the cabinet. Then uh I'm gonna roll it over to the sun. Uh let it dry. Uh then from there we're gonna wet sand it, hit it with the polish. After the polish, we'll hit it with the canuba wax. And uh, after that, we'll be ready to glue it up. Let it sit for 24 hours and then we'll be good to go. So the gold shaft is done. Uh, all I'm gonna do now is I'm going to wet sand this baby. Uh, then I'm going to polish it with the polish and then I'm gonna come behind it with the canuba oil. So, canuba oil. Why do I keep saying canuba oil? Canuba wax. So that's what we're doing. It's already looking good, but if we really want this thing to last and almost be scratched and ding resistant, we gotta do this next step. So, take, take your 1500 again. Just fresh new 1500. You wet it, yeah, you can use the same water. You wet the 1500. You can get this 1500 from like Harbor Freight, so somewhere like that, or you can always just order it on the Amazon. I'll put a link below in the video. You can probably order it on Amazon, and I'll see, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so you take the 1500. This is the lightest, coat that you can possibly put on here wax on wax off all this is doing is keeping it from being super rough you want that silky smooth finish factory finish now we're gonna get with the polish put a little on this paper tie bam that's all you need nickel size you're gonna take it just gonna fold it, boom. Almost like that. Then you wanna take it and you can put the shell in it and you spin and pull. Spin and then pull. Then come back the other way. Spin it and pull. So push it now, spin it and push it. Like I said, you don't have to come all the way up to the edge. Cause the grip gonna be right there. Polish is good. You can see it's already starting to come back to life a little bit. A little bit more shiny already. Polish is good. So you can put it on that thick, put you one more nickel size. Bam. There you go. You want it to almost look like a mess. All right, now you can discard that. 
I like to take one of these pads and I like to slide it in. That same Mr. Miyagi deal I was telling you about. The wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Now we want to get a new microfiber or preferably one that you have washed. We want to do this here motion. Not hard. It's the motion we're doing. Just boom. Like that. I'm excited about this, man. I always wanted to do this video because I see so many people out there talking about what can't be done, what can't be done, blah, blah, blah. But I, I noticed that a lot of people haven't done it. So you can't say something can't be done if you haven't done it. That's all I was saying. So, all right. That is feeling mighty fine. So we're done with the polish. Now we're gonna come across it. With this canuba oil. Canuba oil, stop saying it. Canuba wax. Take this canuba wax. Do the same thing. Start here. Bring it down. You can go pretty heavy on this. All right, we're gonna let that sit for a minute. And while that get a little bit harder, we're gonna get our drill. So I got this little buffer. I think most people use it for cars. Cars. I'm gonna put this in my my vice. But basically, what I'm gonna do is pretty much gonna buff this out. Very gently. Almost like a car. I know a lot of y'all probably like, this shit is crazy. But, this method has worked for me. I have shaft, I have shaft that I spray painted that are still good to this day after being abused in the bag. So, like I say, this is a lot of work. So I wouldn't recommend doing this on an iron set unless you got a lot of time on your hand. But if you want to do wedges and putters, go have fun, man. Cause it is, it is fun. All right, we're gonna do now what I call the fingernail test. If I did this correctly, I should be able to just run my fingernail across this shaft with no problem. Also too, it's okay to do maintenance on this. So like, you know, once every three months, come back, wax it again. That's gonna keep it looking pristine. Keep it from getting scratched up. So, take my fingernail. Pulling my fingernail across this thing, pretty, pretty freaking hard. No scratches, nowhere, no dents or anything. And that, my friends, how you spray paint a golf shell and have it last. It's a lot more steps involved than y'all probably thought, but I just wanted to make a video, you know that show people how to do it. If, they want, if that's something they want to do in their spare time. So we started out at 121. We had 125, that's four grams. I told y'all I wanted to be four grams or under, and that's where we at. I'm not holding it up. It's not propped up on anything. It's freestanding. And I'm at 
it's going in between 125 and 126 so anywhere from four anywhere from four to five grams 125 that's 125 grams so don't be believing people man if people haven't did it tell them to shut up and go try it all right so you mix this up I already took a steel wool you can see where the paint going I make it ready to to take epoxy I like to take it I like to just put it right along here right along here can't use too much either though man because it'll come out the bottom and look ugly so I put it on there then I take it and I put it I'll be careful when I do this but I take it I put it on the inside and then wipe it around like that take the putter head wipe it off right quick I always have using blue paper towels because you're gonna do a lot of wiping you can tell them you can tell them in half like that just have them on standby <laughs> all right take this spin it on you see I'm already getting a lot coming out so what you want to do is take that blue paper towel all that extra so go ahead and wipe it away right now just go ahead and get rid of it right now because it ain't gonna do nothing but clunk it up and make it look ugly and you don't want that so then you take it spin it on the rest of the way keep spinning keep spinning keep spinning all right now that look good but you want to keep it clean so what you do is you take this other paper towel you wipe around the edge and the bottom get whatever little out you can then you take this one and any residue down at the bottom of the hosel clean that out too all right now that that's done you take this Put it back on, like so. And now you can take the time and set this and line it up properly. Let me show you how to do that. I just use this. And from there, you put the offset on it. And I like about a, a shaft and a quarter offset so if my, if my hands gonna be here all right now I'm gonna sit this somewhere out the way where I'm not gonna touch it for a long time today is like the fourth day the third day the fourth day one of them but we dry I like to keep this because it let me know if the epoxy in this head is truly dry when I can come over here and pull that off like that. So this head dry, it's the putter, it's the gold shaft. Everything looks good. Damn, got the bullet backs, bullet back. Got the bullet back. I'm gonna put a grip on here. We're gonna be done. Alright y'all, that's it. So if y'all ever see somebody out on y'all course with a, a black Scotty with gold bullet backs and a gold shell, just know that's uh, built by B. Mason. This uh, video has been a labor of love. A lot of steps. Every video I do is a labor of love, man. Like, it's not easy, like, sitting, sitting up recording every single step, but 
when I wanted to get into this, like I said, I had to teach myself. I can I can really like just find nobody who wanted to <laughs> teach me how to build golf clubs. So uh, it's a little different now. You know, you can you can find some people who are probably willing to help you, or people like me who actually making videos now. But like I tell y'all all the time, I'm self taught, so I encourage y'all to get out there, experiment, do your own thing, find out what works for you, uh, and go with it. My friends uh, and even some of my clients joke with me now, like they say a B Mason club just got a different feel to it. And I like that. And I stand by that because I put a lot of time into these clubs and a lot of energy. So, uh, so yeah, man, that's it. More videos on the way. Y'all tell me what y'all want to see. Go like, subscribe, share this video. All those good things, man. And uh, I'll holler at y'all next time. Goodbye, B Mason.